There's a real and legitimate governance fight going on in Cardano right now about basically destroying the entire future of the chain to make the token price go up a little bit. That was uh, Charles Hoskinson. And to give a little more context, he was not talking about completely destroying his own baby that he built, but he was talking about how the media has portrayed recent conversations and uh, thoughts around the new Voltaire era, uh, era of Cardano and what is going to be voted on. What are people going to do with the treasury? What are the D reps plan on, on doing and what votes are going to be cast? And in this video, we're going to react and, and kind of share some of the important clips from Charles Hoskinson's last video he posted on his page and some important topics such as, are we even able to burn the ADA in the treasury and why that's not a good idea uh, and kind of a slap to the face to the entire Cardano community, the entire user base, and what that means. Also, uh, the role of media in Cardano and uh, how that could potentially change where Cardano is behind. We know where they're ahead. Where are they behind, according to Charles, and what we can do about it? And also, the grand vision of Voltaire. So let's jump off. Let's start with this clip that was towards the beginning of his video talking about the actual capabilities of burning the ADA, not only in treasury, but just burning ADA as a whole. You know, this topic of conversation has been ongoing for a very long time. Here's Charles Hoskinson on that issue. So as of today, September 6th, 2024, there is no capability in the governance functions of Cardano, I believe, to burn all of the funds of the treasury. I guess one could hack a treasury withdrawal function to send the funds to a burn address, but you can't do that until Chang plus one when the DRABs come online. So there is no capability or serious proposal on the table to burn all the ADA. I made a tweet in response because uh, there's right now constitutional workshops happening. And it's a legitimate thing to discuss about the monetary supply of Cardano. And there are some deeply misinformed people whose only concern is the appreciation of value of ADA, blindly thinking that destroying all of the community funds, which we all pay taxes into, I as a stake pool operator like you guys, and a delegator like you guys, paid that 20% treasury tax into that collective fund sacrificed for, they think naively that burning tokens out of circulation will somehow, some way, improve the price of ADA so that they can then dump the minute that the tokens go up. The so, interesting thing there, right? He talks about, well, how was the treasury created? What, what, what's behind all these tokens? And Charles talked about the fees and the network usage. And so, each one of you watching that have ever used or pay revenue fees or transaction fees on the Cardano network by using it, that is part of your money that is sitting in that treasury fund. And so this idea of burning tokens, you see this, this popular narrative, mostly in like high token allocated meme coins. Let's say they have a quadrillion tokens or like a SHIB, right? They burn I don't know, 500 million tokens a month and it will take them 2,500 years to burn it down to where it can potentially get to a dollar, two dollars, which a lot of people are waiting for. So people have this misconception of thinking because we burn the token that the price will go up. That is not true. Supply is not what makes price go up. Demand is what makes price go up. And if instead of burning the treasury money, we can use that money to try to bring in more demand, then those people will eventually get what they want, which is the token price go up. Uh, that is just one thing. Now, the next thing, uh, next point I want to talk about is Charles discussing media's role in Cardano and how he'd like to see that change. So let's take a listen from the same exact video. And this is an example of what happens in social media. You take one thing that is intended to provoke a discussion in the constitutional workshops about whether we should add an amendment to the Constitution to say that there shall only ever be 45 billion ADA and you can't burn ADA. That's got to be decided by and for the delegates. I can't make that decision for you guys. It's a decentralized conversation. And instead, we translate that to there's a real and legitimate governance fight going on in Cardano right now about basically destroying the entire future of the chain to make the token price go up a little bit. 
guys, the token price would go down because people would realize there's no resources now for growth. So that was the uh, full context of the original, the very first clip you saw as we came into the show today. And so people need to understand that that the role of the ADA holders, the role of the D reps is to have these conversations and then to put a proposal and for everyone to vote on it. That is the idea. The idea is not to have one person making decisions. That is the beauty of what governance and Voltaire brings to Cardano and what makes it unique. Now, speaking of what making Cardano unique, we know Cardano is unique in technology, right? Uh, they copied what Bitcoin was, they copied Bitcoin security, moved it over to proof of stake and fix some of the issues that Charles early in his days identified could potentially hinder Bitcoin moving forward, right? Uh, I talk about extended UTXO. You talk about liquid staking. You talk about everything else Cardano has done. So from a technology standpoint, they're ahead. From a community and development standpoint, they're ahead. From peer review papers and, uh, and information, they're ahead there as well. Now, Charles in this next clip talks about, well, what are they behind in and what can we do as a community where can we spend our dollars to help Cardano get ahead of where it is currently behind? So let's take a listen. Where we're behind is marketing, branding, and growth hacking. And the reason being is that the founding set of entities, it was never really clear how that accountability would work. This was a flaw in the construction of the founding set of entities. And unfortunately, because of that, We've been outcompeted in some respects by the Solanas of the world that dump hundreds of millions of dollars into this and other blockchains who do. And they've been able to do a narrative leapfrog and proactively define Cardano to those who have spent no time in our ecosystem, spreading misinformation like wildfire. For example, one transaction per second. Thousands of bad narratives, ghost chain, no adoption, dying, et cetera, et cetera. So, we can just be angry about it and say it's not true or not happening, or we can acknowledge the fact that we are behind in terms of the brand and narrative. We are behind in terms of growth hacking, and we have to repair relationships with the media, with the VCs, with the developer communities outside of Cardano. Interesting there. And so essentially what Charles is saying is, look, we have this badass product. We're ahead in so many things. We're doing things that no one else does, but we're kind of behind on letting people know about it. We have the best restaurant in the entire city of Las Vegas serving the best food. It's just no one knows where that restaurant is or when they're open or what they serve. Uh, so we can get people to know that, hey, we exist. We have delicious, yummy food you can come in and eat. I think people will come. And so it's interesting to see, we saw what happened with Polkadot when that treasury uh, people started extracting money from that treasury. We know, uh, I believe they had Formula One. They had a NASCAR driver. They spent, I don't know, countless amounts of money changing a logo on coin market cap. I have been very outspoken against that kind of money spending. And Adam Dean and I, a prominent member of the Cardano developer community, talked about this in last week, our Cardano video, about what kind of marketing do we want? And I agree with what Adam said that w the marketing we want is we don't want to tell people, hey, here's Cardano, we want brand recognition. No, we want to tell people, hey, this is what you can do on Cardano. If you're a business, you should launch on Cardano because of X, Y, and Z. If you're a user and you want to uh, trade meme coins or you want to trade le whatever you want to do, you want to lend, borrow, supply, earn yield, this is why Cardano is the best. That is a type of marketing that me and Adam, and I'm sure a lot of, of you watching, would like to see that money from the treasury be spent for Cardano. And as Charles said, that is the only thing that we're behind on. Um, if that money is spent wisely, I think uh, the future is very, very bright for Cardano. And then finally, um, to end this, Car uh, Charles talks about the grand vision of Voltaire. Uh, so let's take a listen to what he had to say on this topic. People. I very firmly believe the foundations that we set on where we're ahead gives us the right to play in a conversation about actually changing the economic, political, and social systems of the world as a whole at a scale of millions, eventually billions of people. We have the vision to do this. Our ability to govern, our ability to coordinate, and our ability to work together is going to determine whether we actually do that. 
And this is the grand vision of Voltaire and why I say it's the single biggest competitive advantage we have. All the other ecosystems are either saying we're perfect as of January 3rd, 2009 and don't need to change anything at all and the world will eventually realize their brilliance or trust me, bro, there's some founder over there and they're going to figure it all out. And I believe in the founder. These are absurd positions, but that is the reality of the vast majority of projects in the cryptocurrency ecosystem. The ecosystems like Polkadot and Tezos and Cardano have embraced a very different view, which is, while we have a great start, it's not perfection, and we acknowledge it has to be improved, and you can't trust one founder forever to figure everything out because the world's a complicated place and founders die. And so it's very important that decentralized governments be embraced. We Charles, uh, if you're watching, don't die. We need you still. Uh, all jokes aside, um, that is what truly sets Cardano apart is you have a lot of these projects talking about, oh, this is the people's chain. It's built for the people. Well, only one project really can say that. Uh, and because of what happened with Voltaire and the age of governance we're going in with a constitutional committee, with delegated representatives, with a treasury fund that's accessible by any idea, as long as it gets enough votes to be implemented, uh, that is the true meaning of a decentralized network for the people. And so if that doesn't excite you, and you're only focused on price, attack, price uh, appreciation and what the price action is doing, I implore you to zoom out of just looking at the price Listening to your friends and people in the space talking about, oh my God, my token went up 300%, 400%. That is not why you got into Cardano. Ask yourself why you got into Cardano and why did you stay? Did you get in and stay because you only made a little bit of money or did you find out that the ecosystem is truly one of a kind? That is at least is what I did. I bought Cardano to make money, kind of like what I did with Bitcoin back in 2016. And then when stuff hits the fan, you realize, okay, which ones are out of my portfolio and which ones are in my portfolio? And Cardano happens to be one of the ones that I've cemented as a long-term hold in my portfolio. Is Cardano a long-term hold in your portfolio? Let us know in the comment section. Also, come check out our live show Monday through Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.